Hi, I'm the Scrub, and you're here for one reason. Yar be booty on here, island. Ye tale of misbeard. Captain of the dreaded Harini's fabled crew. Made flotsam and wrecked upon ye isle. Hordes of riches for those who traverse the waters and find ye passage unto the cursed shroud. Time to learn about Hallbreaker Isle. Simplify. As you make your way up the path, you will notice that there are traps. Any player or mob that runs into these traps will be stunned for four seconds and get an assunerable dot tick. In the opening few pulls, focus down the hornets first. If they finish their cast of final sting, it can one-shot you if you don't have decent gear. Pull the first two groups of mobs along the path. Kill everything. Then pull everything along the path until you reach the bridge with the two monkeys. Don't approach the large gorilla, or it will knock you back if you do. Kill everything. Follow the gorilla into the arena. When you pull the boss, the trees on the outside of the arena will become targetable. These will be relevant later. Ads will spawn in, they don't have a lot of health. When the boss gets a vulnerability down and beats his chest, he will send out room-wide AoEs with a stacking vulnerability up to all players. He will do this until he gets a banana. To give him a banana, interact with a tree around the arena. The boss will run over to the fallen bananas and eat them. He will lose his vulnerability down, but gain a permanent damage up stack for each banana eaten. If an ad is alive, they will eat the bananas instead, and the boss will continue to screech. Still pearl is the point blank AOE below a party member. Move out of the orange to avoid it. If you get targeted with crosshairs, the boss will use tackle and knock you back a small distance. Harambe will repeat mechanics until it's defeated. When you pull the cobra, stop and interact with all the treasure coffers in the area. Some will spawn into mimics. Group it all up and kill everything. One of the mimics will drop a stone tablet. Interact with it to pick it up. Head forward and interact with a stone pedestal to open the door. Pull the mobs into the alcove on the right. Spawn the mimics. Group it all up, kill everything, and get the stone tablet. Exit out of the alcove and follow the stream down to the open area on the left. Mimics, kill everything, tablet. Cross the bridge and interact with the two stone pedestals to open the door and it's second boss time. After the fight starts, large blue water-like orbs will spawn in. Ignore these for now. Up well is a straight line AOE, just move to the side to dodge it. After a short time, the worm will become untargetable and dig underground. Spread out and avoid the blue orbs. The worm will start splashing towards one player. If it's coming towards you, just move to the side to dodge it. If you get hit by the splash, you will suffer a stacking debuff called Dropsy. This is not a sooner-able and will remain for the duration of the fighter until you die. After the last splash, the worm will burst from the ground at a high damaging AoE. After the worm is targetable again, it will spawn more blue orbs. It will then give every player a medium-sized AoE underneath them. If you get hit by this AoE, it will give you a Dropsy stack. When the worm burrows underneath again, it will create this pulsating AoE from the middle of the water. Every player will need to quickly run into their own blue orb. This will stun you, suck you into the orb, and give you the debuff of Watery Grave. A whirlpool will be created which will suck in all players that are not in an orb, deal them damage, and give them extra Dropsy stacks. The worm will then burst from the ground and more than likely kill you. When the Watery Grave debuff expires, the orbs will pop, dealing small AoE damage to anyone not in an orb, and free the player. From here, the worm will repeat mechanics until it's defeated. Jump down the cliff to continue the dungeon. Pull the first group of mobs. As you approach the splashing water, water sprites will spawn and your path will be blocked until you kill everything. From here, the path splits in two. Doesn't matter which one you take, but left is shorter and has less mobs. Pull the mobs until you reach the next water blockade. Kill everything. Final boss time. It is important to move as a group and focus one island at a time. There will be an arm located on the edge of each island which can perform the following attacks. Wallop a cleaving hit. Ink blot, an AoE below a random player which will give a dot tick that is removable by using the water spouts. Clear out, a donut AoE which gives a small knockback. Move inside the arm's hitbox to avoid it. After that arm is defeated, you will see there will be water spouts in specific points on the edges of each island. These are used to jump between the islands. Wait for the second arm to pop up on the first island. Kill both arms on all four islands. When you use a water spout, you will be hit with a debuff suppuration, which reduces your max health and increases your damage taken. When you get this green coconut symbol above your head, you will need to jump to the far corner of a neighboring island. Wait there until a tornado spawns on you. Then return to the party. The tornado will explode in a large circular AoE and give a Vuln stack to anyone who is hit by it. When you've defeated at least four arms, a tentacle will spawn on the same island. If you've defeated more than four arms, just continue moving around until it spawns. When the tentacle spawns, it will stun one person, grab them, and throw them to a far platform. After you kill the first tentacle, the second one will spawn in. This is the final enemy. The tornado stuns and throws will continue until both tentacles have been defeated. Congratulations, you have beaten Hullbreaker Isle. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.